in this session we are going to discuss more on space spice so now we are having differing kinds of analysis we can do in the space spice software so that is non linear dc analysis non linear transient analysis ac that is the linear ac analysis noise analysis sensitivity analysis distortion analysis fourier analysis and obviously monte carlo analysis so so many different types of analysis we can do in our pspice software so different types of components are available in the pspice and those components will be used while constructing our circuits as well independent and dependent voltage and current sources resistors capacitors inductors mutual inductors transmission lines operational amplifiers we have shown you so many uh, experiments with the operational amplifier in this tutorial switches diode bipolar transistors mos transistors jfet mosfet digital gates and so on different types of digital ic's are there and which will have the different kinds of circuits so we can use them in our digital application related projects so we are having two terminologies one is a sub circuit so sub circuit means allows you to define a collection of elements as a sub circuit that means you can use a module which is consisting of certain other parts in the respective circuit just consider your operational amplifier it is a very good example of sub circuit edif that is electronic design interchange format a standard published by eia usually used for the net lists whenever you shall go for one piece wise related project you shall be finding so many different files in your project folder and different files are having different purposes and most of the files are text files you can open them in notepad or any other text editor and you can read them and all of them are meaningful and purposeful so some of the extensions are .cir so input file for piece wise that has the file type .cir we are having the file like your .out that is the out file when a circuit is simulated this file will be generated we are having the file that is a dat file .dat is a file default a binary file to see the data .lib so so many library files will be using so where the details of the complex parts are saved we are having the additional files like your .sch that is the schematic data itself dot als alias files dot net network connection files so some of the files are text files and other files obviously they are not text files so let us go for one example to show you that how whenever you are drawing one circuit how the respective cir file is getting created how the when you are doing the simulation how the output file is getting created so that is one circuit in front of you so in this particular circuit you see we are having 120 volt voltage source and we are having this 4 kilo ohm resistance this 5 kilo ohm resistance ra this is my rb this is my rc with 1 kilo ohm and this is one constant current source that is of 2 milli ampere so these are the nodes these are the nodes are there and there is a node number is 0 1 2 3 so vs that means this particular voltage source is in between 1 and 0 node number 1 and the node number 0 dc 20.0 volt we are having this ra in between 1 and 2 node number 1 and 2 with a value 5k we are having rb in between the node number 2 and 0 2 and 0 of 4k we are having this rc in between 3 and 0 node number 3 and 0 with a value 1k in this way this is a current source in between this 3 to 2 so in between 3 and 2 we are having this one and that is of 2 milli ampere current so you see this is our circuit we are making and there is a respective cir file is getting created now when this particular file will get simulated then the output file will be generated so here is one sample output file i'm showing you so if we do the simulation of this uh, respective circuit the output file will be like this one node voltage node voltage node voltage node voltage means at node number 1 voltage will be this at node number 2 the voltage will be this at node number 3 the voltage will be this in this way you can find out that what is the current will be flowing what will be the voltages at different nodes and what is the total job time required what is the to total power dissipation that has been that has occurred 
So everything will be coming in this respective out file. You can open this out file and you can take the print, you can read it, you can get the understanding on the circuit simulation parameters. So available main available libraries are there are files that contain reusable part data. So reticence is a part, induct, inductance is a part, one IC digital IC is a part. They can be custom or default ones. Some of the libraries available in the evaluation version of the PSPICE are. So these are the different libraries are there. The libraries will, will be having the extension .slb. So in case of analog .slb, the analog components like registers and capacitors that respective definitions will be kept. Breakout .slb will be used for the ports. Connect .slb .plb for the connectors. We are having all these sources .slb for various analog and digital sources. So I have listed some of them so that you can you should know that from which libraries actually you are drawing your parts. Different parts which are available in piece files is also maintaining some other properties. Part is a basic building block which may represent. So part is nothing but one basic building block of your circuit and which will contain one or more physical element, a function, simulation model, when a part is placed for the first time, its entry is done in the design cache. Later on, you can bring the respective part from the part library or from the design cache also. So whenever you are bringing the part for the first time, obviously you are going to the library to bring that one and later the part name the, will be there available in the design cache from where you can bring it. Okay, now see, important issues are, so I am making one summary for you. PSPICE is not a case sensitive, that means you can write in uppercase and lowercase letters both. All element names must be unique. One element you have one resistance, you have given a name R1, you cannot give another register with the name R1. So all the registers must have the unique names, so that is applicable for all parts. There must be a node designated by 0, this is the reference node against which all the voltages are getting calculated. In our analog circuits, you can find that we will be using our ground earth. So in our digital circuits also, we will be having some voltage level. So that's why this, this is the voltage level from where the other voltages will be measured. If any change is made in the circuit, make sure that you create netlist again before simulating it. So sometimes it may not be uh, taking care of that when you will be going for the simulation, the software will make the net list again. And this is the respective factors you are having. So we are having this uh, femto, there is a pico, there is a nano, there is a micro, there is a milli, there is a kilo, there is a mega, there is a giga and there is a tera. So respective dimensions factors are given and their respective uh, short forms to be written. So I have mentioned that one. So this is the symbol and there is a respective factor. So while defining a certain resistance, it might be of the rough kilo ohm or say mega ohm, you should mention the respective notations either capital K or small k. You can go for meg either in capital letters or in lowercase letters. So you can do that one because we have mentioned that piecewise is not case sensitive. So in this way we have discussed what are the different other features of piecewise software. Thanks for watching this video.